Hey everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We are at episode 693. This is being recorded on September 7. I think it's September 7, 2022. I'm Sebastian Beek. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm going to be downbeat Brett Van Spurnberg tonight. Hey, there was an Apple event today. You don't have to be down unless you didn't get everything that you wanted from Tim Apple. It was like Christmas and I didn't didn't get any Tim presents. (laughs) Well, every Apple product is a present from Tim. Mm, You just have to exchange your money for it. I just wanted a phone with another home button. Mm, No, forget that. You can support PC Perspective and everything that we do here, including this podcast, by going to patreon.com slash PC per. Yes, this is part of that YouTube video where we beg people to support us on Patreon. But really, we wouldn't do this without you. And we thank all of our supporters for making this possible and helping us pay our bills. So Yeah, because please, my kids are in college and <laughs> I really need the help. If you want to donate a few dollars a month to Patreon, every little bit helps so that I don't have to eat lentil stool three or seven days a week. Wait, lentil stool? You meant meant soup. You meant soup. Soup. No, he he means you. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I meant (laughs) lentils. Okay. Let's move to Laramie and live with Josh as he explores the world of food or something. You can live with me and my two freeloading children who are going to college. So I went down because nobody was answering the phone at the Born in a Barn. And uh, I was like, gosh, I would really use a good burger special. Could really use a good burger special. Burgle. Guess what? There was no burger special. Instead, it was the Chicago Twist. And I had to get it. The Chicago Twist is a hot dog with sports peppers. I'm not just, I mean, those are those kind of smaller peppers. Mustard, caramelized onions, celery salt, fries, and relish. Yes, those fries that you see on the left are part of the burger that you have to somehow cram into your mouth. But when there's a will, there is a way. It was tasty. It was somewhat delightful. But I still wished it would have been a burger. But it still filled me up. The fries were crisp golden brown not like the song golden brown which we don't need to go into that right now it's it's a it's a good song it stays in your mind um but it has absolutely nothing to do with the fries so yeah i would i would say overall it's a 7.5 i mean if you really like hot dogs you probably really like it but again I'm just dying for a really good burger special, and I haven't been able to get one lately. So, anybody from Born to Barn watching this, which is exactly zero, because the the head uh, 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 waitress today decided to sit down and talk to me while I was waiting about her experiences at Burning Man and how I should go there next time, because there's all kinds of interesting things happening there, and she went through a litany of of things that she did and experienced at Burning Man. And as you can tell by Mm. my demeanor and the way I look, that I would be a prime Burning Man candidate. Don't sell yourself short, Josh. I like like a lot of sand in my eyes and clothes and everything else a week after I get away from Burning Man. I thought clothing anyway. was optional at places like Burning Man. I have no idea. Well, yeah, Never but then the sunburn there. stays with you. No, oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Our top story tonight, a nation in crisis. Enthusiasts everywhere have been anticipating AMD's latest platform, AM5. And there is some bad news attached to some of the leaks that have come out. This one in particular from MSI via videocards.com. The pricing. The pricing of X670E motherboards and i put emphasis on e not because i have a speech problem but because the e stands for extreme and in this case enthusiast well i thought it was enthusiast or extreme and i looked at the slides again and uh during the presentation amd was using the word euthanasia extreme doesn't start with a u and so is the pricing by the way because uh uh, you know a a good board an emma a meg Ace from MSI. Solid X570 board, not too expensive. 
an X670 E Ace, six ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah. But there's more. <clears throat> the Godlike. <clears throat> Has a like Godlike a, price, all right. Six or seven hundred dollars before. Does that now, come with cooling? Twelve ninety nine. Ninety nine. Better come with memory and a processor. But you know what? I I'm gonna yeah, take cooling. I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. I think we need to clarify something for the listeners and viewers. X670E is not the enthusiast platform, according to AMD. X670E is the extreme platform, basically HEDT, like an X299, X399. And X670, without the E, is enthusiast. And then X or B6, what is the B series this time? 650. That's yeah. going to be like your mainstream. But look, so, at, look at the pricing on the non E, e here. The non E, e on does this not mean enthusiast. Elite. Pro, Clearly. the X six seventy P Wi Fi Pro, whatever, is two eighty nine. Uh, it's okay, and it's this is a fourteen plus two plus one, you know, power phase. It's DDR five, of course. It's I don't know what people are going to need the E for. More, you are right. You're right, Josh. More PCI E. E well, but a yeah. touchable four and a half inch OLED. IPS screen on well, it as well. They're obviously they're I mean, loading these up to maximize the profit margin. The pricing is crazy, but this is not out of line with what we see at the very high end for Intel enthusiast boards. There's always some board that's over a thousand dollars. Fair. So if that's but, the worst, but even of the it, EVGA X570 was five hundred and some odd bucks. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But we know. made fun of them for that. We 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 sort of recommended AMD over well, Intel from the sheer price of the motherboards. Yeah, but I mean when the X570s were released, the, the godlike was still 500 plus and same with the high-end Asus and <laughs> yeah. all of those. So, yeah, they just doubled it. <laughs> all I In know is that I'm going to use all of that PCIe 5 bandwidth for two Intel are 380s so I can have eight <laughs> outputs and not be limited in my bandwidth. Yeah. And it saves yeah, you, but you know what? You know what they also say? Happily, happily, excess is never enough. And this is proof of that trite saying. I'm on newegg.com because everybody likes it when we, you know, stream browsing on websites but i'm just gonna oh, and sort by highest and price first everybody is approving of new egg lately so definitely stream yeah. more of that okay so the maximus 69 z690 extreme glacial oh, is 20 so this is from some young c supermarket yeah store. go for let's go ship by new egg let's see here most expensive ship by new egg two Two grand. thousand dollars <throat> for a motherboard. <clears throat> the MSI Meg... 1999.99! Oh, here we go. Okay, so their godlike... Isn't that fantastic? Thank you. It's fantastic. Their godlike Isn't board... Isn't that incredible? MSI's godlike Thank board you. for Z690 is $1,200. Yes. So it's a, I think it's a stretch that? to go to, that, to that 13. Two slots? Is that two slots? Because they ran out of lanes? You gotta, you gotta have a pretty big case for that one. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Look at the width. Yeah, that's that's a very wide motherboard. And, and a bit. Oh, 20 plus two phases, though. Two Thunderbolt 4s. Six M.2s. Everything you need. He's starting to sound like... But that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the... One, okay. one PCIe. <laughs> <laughs> if you... The, six, the 670 had 22 phases, by the way. Not USB 1 or USB Not 2. Not all phases or... are created the same. Oh, all right, fair enough. So I, I look at phases Speaking and I just say, like, who cares? Like, if it's a quality, uh, if it's quality components, if each one can handle 90 amps, if it's, you have to look at the continuous, like the the momentary ratings for these things, whether this is being doubled to give you that number or if it's individual phases or what. But I I think what's going to end up happening is there's going to be a whole lot of boards in the two to $300 range for AM5. And then there's going to be the crazy expensive, like 600 and up for the, you know, no cost, no object enthusiast crowd. 
Because there, there already is that on the Intel side. And Intel doesn't really do high-end desktop. Neither does AMD. They've already, we've talked about this. The Threadripper Pro is the only Threadripper now. You can't get Threadripper for consumer mm -hmm. anymore. 16 core, 32 thread on the latest architecture on a, you know, X670E is going to be pretty damn high-end. But you'll pay for it if you want all the lanes. Oh, they have lanes no, to spare. Come on. Class, by the way. You know, I've been trying to get the, the whole... And it just doesn't do it. It's just crap. It's not even crystal. Are you sure it's crystal? I'm not even sure what show we're doing right now. So that was that motherboard story. Uh, we will see, of course, how pricing actually shakes out. Because we're just going based on one MSI leak or report right now. E, e does not mean enthusiast. No. That's what you need to know. expensive. E means, yeah. E is extreme, and then not, it's, it makes it makes total sense. Especially when you look at AMD's new naming scheme for their mobile processors. Yes, starting in 2023, they've taken a page out of Intel's playbook, and now you have to decode the processor to figure out what the hell it is. So, they so it's a Ryzen example. 7, right? Well, no. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not. Is it? It's is it seventh <laughs> gen? No, it's is it is that the market segment? Is that no? Okay. No, is it numerology? Because two plus two plus three equals seven. You're still Ooh, not paying attention. I didn't think about that. Okay, the example it, they gave was a totally Ryzen is. five seven six forty U, where the seven wait a Ryzen five seven six forty U under that nomenclature is redundant. It's true, like it an is, automatic killer machine. Okay, here's the part I don't get, because they've separated, the first digit is the portfolio model year. So they've decided that seven, instead of it being, you know, 7,000 series or whatever, seven means 2023. So the next digit is six. I'm sorry, how many how many nanometers is this again? I Who knows? <laughs> yes. Next, well, it's there, that's covered under your architecture. Uh, uh, okay, thank of. you. Market right, segment thanks. is the next digit. This is the part I don't get. Because you'd think, oh, market segment, that would be a five, because it's a Ryzen 5. But if you go down their list, market segment six is a is Ryzen the upper end five. Ryzen 5. That makes sense. The high right? end Ryzen no, 5. No, but the feature isolation digit is supposed to show you lower, lower model within segment or upper model within segment. But instead... <clears throat> so they it's, have a, a, it's a high end lower model in segment. Is it, wait, yes. is the six to no it's upper low, lower class? It's well, an upper lower. Oh, okay. Middle class. Yeah. But I thought upper lower was only if there was Zen 4 Plus and this was Zen 4, but maybe Ouch. a high end Zen 4, but not quite a Zen 4 Plus. But those aren't out yet. But neither is this. In fact, Robert Hallett called this a hypothetical Ryzen 5 7C640U. So it doesn't even exist outside of the world of theory hope so and so you're uh, saying that this is same same but different yes it's still the same yeah well it's but very it easy look all you have different. to do is look at the template for this which is uh the intel processor naming scheme because when they changed mm -hmm. their processor names they actually had to provide this little decoder image and you have the brand you have the brand modifier which is i7 i5 the generation indicator, and then the part that's more arbitrary, which is the SKU numeric digit. So 65 doesn't mean anything, but it just happens that this is an i7-10-65. 10th gen, model number 65, whatever that means. And then they had a graphics that indication. Was an I would like that because these new processors have graphics, but they have no graphics designation. Or maybe they don't oh. all have graphics because, you know, they're using three they, different they're generations. They're probably going to like a 7640U with RDNA 3. No, but two. we can't call it RDNA 3 anymore now. Well, it wouldn't no, be RDNA 3 because I don't think they're, a RDNA, they're not above RDNA 2 in the mobile parts yet. We could always RDNA find the ones with graphics. Right. I mean, with the G part number and uh, they've taken that from us. The important yeah. thing is that the middle here, the middle panel shows a four in 7640U. The four is the architecture. So in this case, that would be Zen 4. 
And that means that there are going to be parts out something there. Something makes sense with a different lower number, like three or even two, in the same seven thousand series available simultaneously. Yes, AMD has confirmed that they will be launching three different architectures at the same time under the Ryzen 7000 series mobile CPU banner. All right, I want a 9910E. I just don't get the you, market segment. You can't thing. just make up part numbers. You can't. Well, right. that's, it okay. says right there that exists. They need more numbers. If they're going to have a market nine. segment 6, give me a Ryzen 6. What's wrong with Ryzen or 6? Ryzen 8. Yeah. You don't have to copy Intel. Just because Intel came out with i5 back in the Nehalem era doesn't mean that you can only do Ryzen 5. You could do Ryzen 4, and you could do Ryzen 6. But I guess that... But then you'll not have the Mojo Ryzen. Mm. Let's look at the mm. upcoming 7000 series back. product range, which has five distinct segments with no overlap says amd so you have your everyday computing which will be athlon ryzen 3 and ryzen 5 you'll have your mainstream thin and light which will be ryzen 3 ryzen 5 and ryzen 7 it sounds like overlap but it isn't because one is going to be 7020 which is a uh Mendocino. zen 2 and then I mean, a ryzen no. 7 is mainstream no no really. zen yeah. plus is two right no well, is I mean, it? it's the seven. Wait, no, because there's the modifier. So two says Let, that it's a let's Zen go back. Two. Class, let's, uh, let's go, go back, back and look at the modifier refresh. again. Refresh. Yeah, look, Under feature Sorry. isolation, you have to look at the model within segment, which denotes a plus or a non-plus. Because as oh. you know, in binary, a zero is zero and a one is five. Five. Apparently. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's not a one, it's a five. Well, yeah, but it's it's a different kind of binary. It's binary by fives or something. I don't really understand. There's a whole bunch of... You That's can read, only, it. You yeah, can read their, their post. Which makes... Robert Halleck wrote a post about this. And he talks about the new model numbers and what's it a name and how to read the new system and why they did this and the years ahead. And he says, as a closing aside, I'm quoting, we are not planning changes to the general numbering system we've used on desktop since the AMD Ryzen 1000 series. This will continue forward as you... You would expect, end quote. Oh, good. The oh, Ryzen so 10,000 series is coming. Yeah. <laughs> they're only going to be mucking the mobile CPUs then. Yeah. It's just going to be yeah, yeah. a complete But nobody cluster. cares because you buy a, a laptop on price, price essentially. Yes. yes. <laughs> We've just transitioned to our next story, which is about Intel. Finally, after all this AMD talk. Damn. Intel. Graphics. Yes, ARC graphics, everyone's favorite topic. But this time, it's more about the practical side of ARC, the GPU compute side. And the latest version of Blender has added support for Intel ARC GPUs. Interestingly, the Windows driver version of 101.3418 or newer, I don't think that's out yet. Actually, it says it is recommended to use ARC beta drivers. Let's see if 3418 is out there. Let's see, 3276 is the latest. So they may have uh, let the cat out of the bag on an unreleased version of the ARC driver, but it's coming, and you'll be able to use Blender GPU cycles with your ARC graphics card. And speaking of ARC, Intel has confirmed that ARC A770 and A750 will launch at the same time and very soon. Now, if that isn't a strong confirmation, I don't well, know. Well, the ever-reputable uh, Ryan uh, Shrout and Tom Peterson. Uh, yes, Ryan so, so. Shout and uh, <laughs> Tom Peterson have confirmed <laughs> it to PC Games Hardware and Digital Foundry. That's multiple sources. And if you have mm. multiple sources, you'll never get fired like Dan Rather. Right. It's a mm -hmm. fact. Right. Look at these two. There's Ryan. I think aging gracefully comes um, to mind. Uh, I mean, he looks less like Zuckerberg nowadays, so at least there's that. Two interesting things from this article is that uh, those without uh, uh, rebar need not apply for the greatest uh, arc 
performance. I found that sort of interesting. If you have an older CPU motherboard combo, don't buy the high end arc and that they're aiming for someplace between 3060 and 3060 Ti. And lest we forget where that performance metric really falls is you're buying a 1080 Ti. Yeah. For what a 1080 Ti used to cost. Whatever. I just want to point that out as just to go like, hot take, you're buying a 1080 Ti. Yeah, but for three to 400 bucks. Yeah, whatever, you know. Very soon anyways. <laughs> unless it's Very later. soon. Launch date, very soon. And then the unless it's Arc later. 580 later. Of course, you can already buy the A380, though, once again, it's out of stock at Newegg. I think it's pretty much he better. Been out of he stock better send me an RK770 very soon. I hope or else I'm going to release the all end. the information I got on him. All of it. <laughs> oh, you should hold out for more expensive than that, Josh. <laughs> do you? Well, that's do you have Remember, hey, Jeremy, it's don't evaluate the It's Very interesting. It was not interesting at all. It just have some information. Yeah. Yeah, hold out for more than four hundred bucks, though. So. Mm-hmm. Jeremy, they've already dispelled the myth that there's an Arc A780. That was a lie. There's yeah. only the A770, so that's all he can get. That's the best he can do. The new GPU-Z is here. The new GPU-Z is here. GPU-Z 2.48.0 released. Well, here's here's something that uh, changed. GPU-Z will no longer send any traffic to techpowerup.com, but instead to GPU-Z.com, so administrators can easily block traffic originating from GPU-Z across a large organization. That... Uh, something that was requested by a certain company. Yeah, also, that one was an interesting hmm. note. Yeah. Also on NVIDIA's request, we've programmed GPU-Z to disable all of its network activity, automatic and manual, when an engineering sample is detected. They've also added a bunch of arc. Gosh, I wonder where some of these leaks have come from. Can't imagine. <laughs> the <laughs> video cards is usually. Are we ready to talk about USB 4 <laughs> V2? No, uh, not really. <laughs> hey, at least it's the <laughs> same. My God, connector. it's uh, yes, it is. Uh, ex- in theory, except I wouldn't try USB one on it because uh, if they don't even suggest that the pinout works for it. But it's still not Thunderbolt, except when it is Thunderbolt four. Um, but it, now it can actually go faster than Thunderbolt four, except not. Well, it depends. It depends and, on how many you know lanes are going in which direction. Well, and what you're plugging it into. Because essentially what they're talking about with the, this idea, because, I mean, we've already got USB 4 motherboards all over the place. So wait, right. Um, so, yeah, anyways, they're on to version 2 because they need to confuse us even more. I'm sure it will have a longer name very soon. Don't worry. But originally USB 4 was supposed to be 40 gigabits. Bidirectional. So sort of 80, but theoretically, because there's a lot of overhead. So USB V2 is more for plugging monitors in. So the theory is that it can actually provide a theoretical 80 gigabits of bandwidth, uh, bidirectional to one device, or it can sort of do an asymmetrical one where you've got 100 gigabits, 120 gigabits, which is going to one specific device, like say a 4K monitor with a high refresh rate, and the other 40 is reserved for the docking station, which is attached to. So, but but there's no back talk, right? But yes, there's no back talk okay. whatsoever um, between right. the dock and yeah. So then we're looking at 20 bidirectional and 80. Or sorry, uh, 60 bi-directional. So it's v- ridiculously confusing because, well, they say it's 120 gigabits. It's not even close. It, it's only if you're sort of plugging in uh, to uh, a dock, which would accept the signal, and a monitor, which accepts the signal, and the, mon- the dock's got to pass through directly to the monitor. But in theory, you should be able to run an 8K 144 hertz display on a compatible dock assuming there's no back talk or overhead in any way, shape or form. I, I it, think by the time like any other US those displays, I right? don't know, man. Like, those... 
so yeah, anytime you sort of dig into USB, it drives you absolutely insane because the, the, the USB implementers and forum loves names that are longer than an Acer uh, display and just makes things incredibly complicated. So yeah, don't worry. You don't even have USB 4 yet. So USB 4 or V2 type 1.revision 3.8 will soon be around. It's... Although it's interesting because the other nice thing about that is you should be able to daisy chain monitors together. So, you know, not one 8K, but two 4K 144 hertz on the GPU you've got, which can totally drive that. Okay, we're working on this. USB is starting to sound like a GISA code. Like USB 4.0.2.ab. Gen version 2. two. Dot one. No, not for Gen two or Type. version two. Those are not. They're not the same. No. Wait. Uh, yeah, Gen time. two is a. It's a flavor of Linux. Yes, it is. It's also US, USB three Gen two, and a well, don't forget two by two, because oh, the by two stuff. Gen. Gen uh, you you drop two by two hands completely. Ooh, nice <laughs> reference. My question is: Will Apple release a USB four Gen two cable that's white and? breaks the first time you use it that's what I mean. uh, first off no because if it will be do. a thunderbolt 4 version 2 but other than that you're right yes it will be do you know how impossible this makes motherboard testing motherboard testing <laughs> uh, is already even more how many peripherals do you need to test motherboard connectivity how many PCIe slots do you need to disable, or PCIe lanes do you need to disable before you can get full speed from that USB? Uh, it it depends on what what configuration you did uh, at the BIOS level before you booted. You know, let's just go back to jumpers, okay? I'm I'm done. Okay, I'm, those are definitive. I'm all for this. That De- the jumpers are definitive. Yes. On off. On yes. Off. <laughs> Engaged, not engaged. <laughs> and when it reboots, oh, well, the jumper doesn't move position. It doesn't revert back to where you didn't doesn't want it reset. to be. Isn't beautiful? It is. It's a certain it's way it should be. A certain beauty in that. Yeah. <sighs> hmm. All right. Let's. Okay. Well, Josh, we might as well take a nap because these two are going to be talking for a while. Oh, we'll do this no, as quickly no, we're as not. we can. Because Apple had a very special event today where they announced all the new fruity things that you just can't live without ios fruity things mm-hmm. and phone fruity things no, f- and watch. iphone 14 right just the pro no they two iphone 14 and 14 pro so oh, two okay. two new phones coming oh, I out see. A, I, just, I had to scroll farther yep a about a 6.1 and a 6.7 inch so that's going to be quite a phone a15 with six cores the, okay, what was the previous size i thought it was already six and 6.7 it, uh, I th- have you I used think an so, iPhone they've... lately, or are you still stuck on that <laughs> SE piece of crap? Oh, I can't believe you! You've you've wound me so much. All right, you're on your own. <laughs> okay, I'm using an iPhone 12 myself. What are the sizes of these things? They've uh, they've pulled up. Yeah, same size. A uh, 14 is the same size. 6. And then there's 1. the uh, yeah the third. There's the been no change iPhone 14 looks like the 13, which looked like the 12. What's different is a magical new way to interact with the iPhone. Of course, I don't I think the word groundbreaking. iPhone. You left out the word groundbreaking, I think. But oh, yeah, go well, on. Well, what about transformative? Uh, uh, what not about in this particular It's a paradigm sense? shift. Uh, don't see. I will, I will not. I will not succumb to your hyperbole. Okay, groundbreaking safety hold? features and a innovative 48 megapixel camera. Tell that to uh, Nokia that it's innovative. Yeah, but this one will be good. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the best camera I've ever used in a smartphone is still my Nexus 6. The Sony image sensor in that one was incredible. Uh, let's see. Did one you ever notice uh, the, the lack of uh, the notch has taken a different shape? It's a little smaller. Yeah, the notch is smaller. It is a bit smaller. Does anybody yeah. care? Okay. Uh, AirPods Pro. They're, uh, I'm curious as to how they're getting their uh, lossless. Are they using a proprietary Good codec? Good question. They, they're not, certainly, I wouldn't be using Aptex HD. Uh, 
Was there another, was there a Bluetooth variant that would have allowed this or no? No. no. Okay. In theory, an upcoming, I think Bluetooth 6, there has to be greater data um, bandwidth. Is the I'm they for. they did go all eSIM, so no more SIM card slots. Uh, yeah, which no more is, uh, iPhone essentially for me. One is what that sounds like. <laughs> well, it's, it's one iPhone compatible with this generation. One or iPhone fits all. Well, no, why do you ask these sorts of questions? It, it, it's immaterial. <laughs> What's immaterial? <laughs> the watch, which there were all these, these leaks about the new watch is going to be completely different. It's going to have squared off. I'm like, how uncomfortable would that be to wear? No, and then, of course, terrible. they released it, and it's just the same thing as last year. It's got a couple other features that are mostly geared towards uh, women and their um, monthly cycle tracking and ovulation and stuff. Like, great. So, anyway. It's great. Can't wait to get the new Apple Watch for all the... Uh, to, for it to check my temperature every five seconds while I sleep. <laughs> From a hardware perspective, there's a new... A16. And that's in the 14 Pro and the 14... 14- Pulls up the 13 Pro. A15. Yeah, that's so, a CPU you, know, some you can point, only get in the 14 Pro. Not in the 14. That's correct. Right? The, A, the A16 is only in the 14 Pro. The A14 pulls up the previous 13 Pro uh, CPU uh, into, into it. So uh, at some point, Josh will be able to tell us a lot more about the uh, whatever's going on inside the A15. At some point. Let's now briefly look at a creepy story about AI... Uh, I don't even know what the. This is creepy AF. Is this really yeah. AI or is this just cosplay? I mean, uh, no, it's well. That's the terrifying picture in the bottom right. There is the AI took uh, an improbable, impossibly to be made human Pro- picture and made it into a perfect cosplayer. That's it's not a, it's, the, is, the drawing is not a perp proportioned person but the ai yeah. made it so because it went out and found and, a picture of the cosplayer i'm imagining well i mean it's got five billion to go through so it's quite possible but you know so we've already seen dali 2 and uh nvidia's one and it's like oh so what's the big deal here well so all of those are cloud-based right you submitted an image or a, a text prompt and it generated it for you and in theory kept a record of you know who it was that made the account and had this picture made. Well, Stable Diffusion is locally run. Uh, Ars Technica tried it on an RTX 3060 12 gig, and it does a 512 by 512 image in about 10 seconds. A 3090 Ti did it in four. And so you can just do whatever the hell you want with a picture and upload it. And uh, there's really no one to be able to tell because... In theory, there's no tag, there's no metadata, there's no nothing saying this one is computer generated. And Hackaday had even more fun with it. They started out with a hand-drawn crayon picture of the Seattle oh. skyline. Yeah, which I saw they kept that one. Feeding back into it, and then eventually were like prompts like uh, and make it post-apocalyptic and throw an alien sky, uh, an alien starship into it, and yeah. The difference, the difference with this one is that it's open source. The other ones you had to upload yeah. an image, and it's yeah, sort no, of this like one you do on who your you own. were. Yeah. So here's the difference: so, that one in the upper left hand corner is the hand drawn image. The one to the right, the upper right hand corner. Yep. Yeah, but then they fed it through a few more times, and you get the one in the bottom there with the space needle bottom and left. everything. Yep. That's just the algorithm chewing through stuff. Hmm. And already, because this is totally open source, uh, Stable Diffusion has branched out. Oh, and you can do totally, you can do clothes. Uh, this gal, yeah, this guy, this gal is like, yep, yeah, I'm just wearing different stuff. There's a little bit uh, in the video. If you really look at it, there is a little bit of bit rock going on, but mm-hmm. you'd never see it, uh, especially if you're just flipping through. But this is already branched. It's fully open source. So it's already branched into God knows how many different things where people are tweaking uh, the training set that it's got, uh, giving it slightly different flavors. And yeah, this is, you know, the uncanny Valley wasn't supposed to eat us, but I think uh, this is going to help do that. I hope that photography way, is dead. Nonsense. Or uh, think about the web. I love photography. Guys. 
I love photography too, and I fear that it might be dead. No. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what you do? You use this. You feed the f- the photograph into it, and you draw, bring it back to the crayon, and then mm-hmm. you'd be you'd be unique. I'm okay. trademarking that, by the way. <laughs> back to Go the crayon. Right ahead. Back to the crayon. All right. Let us pause here for a word from this week's podcast sponsor. Guys, it's no secret that women can love a nice beard and that we love growing them, or at least trying. But having a great looking beard requires work. Whether it's beard oils, styling products, or even a top of the line trimmer, there's a small army of products seemingly required to grow your best beard. Luckily, there's Beard Club. As the leader in beard first men's growth and grooming, Beard Club delivers quality hardware and consumables that'll help you grow a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. I recently had a chance to use the Beard Club Trimmer Deluxe Kit over the past couple of weeks. The PT45 trimmer itself has an adjustable depth cutter, and additional numbered plastic clips and sandoffs. So getting dialed in was trivial. It's a super nice and true Truly hefty trimmer. And for me, I'm getting a sweet, repeatable trim at different depths, no hair pulling, and has an awesome battery life. Like I said, it's super nice. The kit also comes with plenty of other beard upgrades too. I didn't even know how pleasant sandalwood beard balm or shampoo was. I expect you won't be disappointed with how good your face and beard will feel either. So head over to beardclub.com slash PCPer. Take the beard quiz and use our code PCPer at checkout. They'll be able to dial in a grooming kit recommendation just for you. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. In tech gear speak, go up Upgrade your Beard Care OS. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash PCPer and use our code PCPer. That's beardclub.com slash PCPer. Code PCPer. And get 20% off your first order. We're back and it's time for Gaming Quick Hits. It's the part of our show where we talk about video games or games that are in development or tangentially related video game things like tablets sometimes for some reason mice very fast mice steel rising arrives as a friendly souls like how can it be souls like if it's friendly please well it's like that's a non-secretary i know it was built as a souls like uh but you're a robot in a steampunk alternate universe in the french revolution where uh louis decided to kill all the humans and Marie Antoinette had her own personal robot party guard who they, she sends out to, you know, fix things, which is you. And so it was sort of sold as a souls like type game, but a lot of the reviewers have said, well, um, yeah, it's souls like, but it's like super easy comparatively when you encounter a big boss, you only die like once or twice before you figure out its patterns and win. which to me doesn't sound like a bad thing. Cause souls like games just, annoy the fucking hell out of me. I don't need to get good. I have a lot of other things to do than memorize entire patterns and just, you know, bash my head for against one the enemy, wall. For one enemy. For one enemy. Really, if you want me to bash my head against the wall for five minutes, I, I would rather just do that. It's quicker. It's over sooner than doing the load screens. So there's been some complaints about that, which honestly, I think, makes it, at least for me, a little more interesting. But on the other hand, uh, the one of the big uh, key points of the Souls games is that you you light your bonfire. In this case, you touch a statue, and it becomes your save point, and you die, and you go back to it. Well, in Souls-like games, usually you can teleport between them. In this one, you can't. So apparently, the, it does ex- encourage a lot of exploration, and it looks gorgeous, but... If you end up getting snuffed, you may end up on a 10 minute walk through a bunch of stuff you didn't enjoy through the first time. So no, it's, it looks like an interesting balance. The, the idea is good and no one hates the gameplay. No one hates the idea. Uh, a lot of people like the weapons and the, the, the strange balances of it, but a lot of people are whining that it's just not hard enough. So I'm sure they'll just come up with a nightmare mode in no time at all. And, you know, make every boss move twice as fast and have three times the health points. And then we'll get back to beating it with a banana and, or a rock star uh, guitar and everyone will be happy again. But in the meantime, I don't know. It sounds like it could be interesting. I want to play Elden Ring, but I have a feeling it's just going to annoy the heck out of me after about a half hour, 45 minutes when I just get killed one too many times. I'm like, yeah, I just, I don't have the patience anymore. Well, maybe you have the patience for a thief with guns am up, which is a mm. new category for me. Gloomwood. Is that the name of it? Glo- uh, Gloomwood. Yes. But the arrow is thief with guns. Okay. This, and I, I didn't have much chance to look at it, 
but totally reminds me of Sir, You Are Being Hunted, uh, which was a game that uh, actually one of the guys that used to work at Rock Paper Shotgun made, and there's supposedly an enhanced edition coming out soon. But it's the same sort of thing. You, you've sort of got guns, but there's a lot of robots out to kill you, so if you want to try and gun everyone down, it's not going to come out well for you. you. You go and die. But if you want to choose it to... Well, that was well done. Uh, if you want to use it to shoot out light bulbs, uh, if you want to throw something to distract a guard and then stab them, then, you know, that's that's more what Thief with Guns is like. You're not, hmm. you're not Duke Nukem. You, you're just a little more heavily armed thief. Well, their website's down because of all the traffic. Yeah, Apparently they're popular. Traffic. Yeah, it's, it's blowing up. It's from our stream. I went with old thief graphics today in the background. Oh, so. let's look. Yeah. No, thief. Mm-hmm. Thief. There's thief up there as well. But oh, uh, yeah, thief. Uh, we, yep. We talked about, um, original thief makers last time with system shock so this is sort of a synergy between last week's show and this week's show thief is there uh, that was uh, can i harmonics. tell you how disappointed i am that looking glass studios was closed down in like 2000 yes. 2001 oh absolutely they yeah. were they were an amazing Harmon- stu- i don't know why well they be- most Economics. of them went to harmonics they most of them went to harmonics to make uh, rock band or some of them did anyway I feel like we've already covered this next topic <laughs> as we shift seamlessly to security <clears throat> corner, but it's new. How many zero days for Chrome are there? Apparently this one's from September 2. How many do you want? Because there's at least one well, more than that. These are fun, so let's just keep rolling with it. Okay, so you need to be on <laughs> Chrome 105.0.5195.102 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. To have the version that addresses a single high severity security flaw, the sixth Chrome Zero Day, right this year. And if you're not, you will melt your face off. Please, please upgrade. Like how they explain how to check for new updates. How about how to you know get them to stop checking for new updates <laughs> constantly? <laughs> so no exploitation <sighs> details are yeah. available. Yeah, anyway. they really didn't talk about what the exploit was on this one, but they did talk about that it was sort of a message passing uh, process boundary sort of violation that's going on in this particular situation. They have not published proof of of um, vi- uh, of severity code yet. I think they're trying to allow people to uh, get a chance to upgrade everything. Although there has actually been exploits of this out in the wild. So for God's sakes, please, please upgrade. If unless you want to be taken advantage of in a way that you don't want to be taken advantage of, including Josh, he does not want to be taken advantage of this way either. No, not at this point. And you don't want <laughs> to be to five years. <laughs> you don't want to be running windows and have chromium and electron reported as malware that can be disturbing yeah too. chrome chrome uh, you know i'm not sure that it's, uh, i don't know if they were chrome? wrong jeremy hmm. are they wrong though are they wrong well i mean i'm amazed it didn't catch edge so uh maybe there's something weird going on here because I, I isn't yeah, something edge, weird like chromium, you know the only safe edge. solution is to use edge guys you can't trust Google. Our, our pop-up windows are not enough. Our redirects are not enough. So, well, we're just going to, you know, um, accidentally make it as malware. I like how the register says, neither Spotify nor Chrome are malware or ransomware, despite their info harvesting practices. They're quibbling. Is it really? <laughs> is, it ran- is it ransomware when you invite it into the house? No, it's not. It's like the... <laughs> Even knowing it's going to walk off with hey. the silverware? You don't, uh, Jeremy, you don't there's such a thing a as vampire social, and you don't invite uh, diseases. Uh, you know what? You just might because you know a lot of these are social engineering attacks. You've invited it in. You've essentially clicked the link. You know what I'm saying? You've you've downloaded something. Drank the you've off, yes. Uh, what does that count as inviting the vampire in? I, I think it. Might. I mean, it's up there. Speaking of up there, oh good god. Up on top of your head, Jeremy, 
I don't know if you're wearing them right now. I am. You reviewed a pair of headphones, and this is the first of three audio-related reviews that yeah. we put up in like the last 72 hours. I apologize, but you know what? We, they sent us a lot of audio stuff, and you just got to get to it. It's the I was wondering price. why the uh, Fosse guys didn't uh, get back to me, because they got back to Jeremy. Yeah, yeah they did. Scooped it up. Yeah. I, I even politely declined at first, and they were uh, politely insistent. Oh, wow. Huh. So, Monoprice, the Sync ANC. They're wireless headphones with more for less, writes Jeremy. Ah, Please give us a lowdown on these. But they are also <laughs> wired headphones. Oh, they are. So, you can bring them on the uh, airplane with you. Uh, I'm wired in right now, as okay. I prefer to be. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I've done a couple of Monoprice headset reviews recently. Uh, so, this is yet another one. Uh, it's the lowest price one at $60. But for 60 bucks, you get Bluetooth 5 with low latency AppDeck support nice. and uh, active noise cancellation, hence the ANC. Uh, the ANC and everything else has buttons. So if you're not a big fan of tapping your ear cups in bizarre ways in public to try and do things, so in this case, it's got an on and off switch, it's got a volume rocker, it's got a pause Come play. On, you can pretend to be on Stargate Atlantis. Uh, I do your, with the wireless ones. Your ear to talk to people. Yeah. yeah. And of course, their, their perfect best uh, feature is, which is you always know which one's the right ear cup and which one's the left ear cup. Uh, one thing that uh, is worth noting is that the ANC, well, the you're, you're National three and a half Congress. Years, uh, you know it. You and me and the ANC. Yeah. Uh, the uh, three and a half mil cable does not supply power. So if you're going to turn ANC on, it's going to eat your battery. Uh, that's why there's a physical switch to turn it on and off. If you're wired in and you've got it on, you've got about 14 hours, which isn't bad. I mean, they're expecting about 20 hours uh, at about 50% volume. Wireless turned on the ANC, cuts it down to about 10. You're paying 60 bucks. Don't complain. You want 60 hours, pay for the $120 ones that I reviewed, which are very similar to this. Uh, there's a couple of pictures of them side by side. They're they're similar in design. Uh, the the other ones are a little bit fancier, as you can see. They're they're part of their more high end, uh, yeah, their high end skew. Whereas the, the Sync Ank is supposed to be, you know, relatively decent, cover everything that you need, but not be quite as much uh, as impressive as the M1000 ANC. Though, to be fair, that one doesn't have low latency uh, Aptex. It's just got the basic Aptex. The other fun thing about these is you're able to pair to two devices at the same time. Now, don't listen to them at the same time, but it's actually stupidly handy to have it paired to your phone and to like a, a Bluetooth stereo. So you put your phone away and you walk over and it's like pairing and now you're paired to the receiver. It It's actually... You know, it seems like a silly thing, but it's actually kind of a good trick. The other fun thing is that, you know, if it's like you got a friend at a bar and it's like, okay, well, I want to pair to them to see how they sound. You don't have to do the unpair dance. So then he can pair to them. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, uh, nice. I'm flexible that way. I can connect to two things. Just don't send nice. me them both at the same time. So yeah, overall, I mean, they're not brilliant. They've got some nice sound to them. The ear cups are comfortable. It's metal construction, so if you throw them in a bag, they're not going to bust or anything. So at sixty bucks, you know, not bad. It's sixty dollars. It does have point. a little bug in it though. Okay, which is when I was walking, uh, like I, I went on a fairly long walk, and so every time I stepped with ANC on, it turned that little into an audible thunk. Really. Every step, like it was trying, to, like off. it was trying to cancel it, like it was trying to cancel and it, but it, yeah, but. Unfortunately, no. by the time the sound it was trying to cancel had happened, it was actually a physical motion, hmm. and mm -hmm. so it ended up amplifying it. But you know, if, if you walk to the beat of Pump Up Your Jam, it would give you a whole new world. Uh, of, of it, it was actually ministry, and it worked very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it was my hard face to get the double bass off. going, but it was a single, the single one I could do. It didn't happen on a bus, like a bump on a bus? No. But walking, yeah, definitely I wouldn't recommend these for walking, at least without the ANC 
if you turn the ANC off, it's pretty bad. It's pretty good, but otherwise, yeah. So these cans weren't made for walking. They were that's not, not what Thank they'll you, do. One of these days, these, these cans are gonna ANC walk are all gonna... over you. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom. Let's move to another subjective audio review here at PC Per. And it's the Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2 Gaming Soundbar. I don't know what you're thinking. A gaming soundbar? Forsooth. But it's a real thing. And uh, I'm going to cut to the chase. As I say here in the subtitle, don't be distracted by the RGB. Uh, there's a, a large... There's a long RGB... Can you, um, can you turn bar. that off? Can you yes, turn it of off? of course you can turn it off. Everybody asks okay. the first question. Can you turn off the RGB? And the answer is yes, you can. Good. Don't be distracted by the RGB. This soundbar produces great audio. And this is coming from a sort of a snob. I try not to be a snob. That's not very big for great audio. No, I it's about 25, 24 inches wide. It's about two feet wide. I'll get to the uh, images of it here. Let's see. Here's all the stuff you get. Here's the power adapter. There is the unit itself. It's 23 point something inches wide. I say the actual dimensions here, 23.6 inches wide, 3.74 inches deep, and 2.44 inches high. That's positively minuscule. It's pretty small. And interesting kind of placement. Now, this is similar to the original Katana uh, sound bar. This is the second one, hence V2. There are these top, um, not necessarily upward, almost upward and backward <laughs> firing drivers and their front drivers so it's back and to the left and to the right <sighs> here's a side view you can see it's it's a angled uh top ah. the, the sound bounces off of your monitor if you have a it monitor ricochets. that's at least you know 20 inches so wide th they're they're sort of re obviously recommending you place this beneath your screen so they can use it as a reflective well, surface. Yes, I would say that most people put a soundbar beneath their screen, so that makes sense. Okay. Here are the All inputs. Right. Here's where it will differentiate itself from a lot of soundbars. You're thinking, oh, soundbar. Well, does every soundbar oh. have a USB audio input? Really? So it has a DAC? Yes. And it has so everything's built in and a headphone jack. It's, you know what? An optical in. Here's the thing. It's a sound card. Ooh. When you plug it into your computer, it just shows up as a sound blaster. So 24 Way. Bit, 96 kilohertz sound blaster card. Smart. So you've got Interesting. HDMI arc. You have USB for connecting it to a PC. Aux in, 3.5 millimeter. Aux, uh, has an optical input. For, for, aux in is for the pores amongst, you know, oh. the, the, it's for the population. It's, it's universal. <laughs> <laughs> optical in and then in the sub out is you know your Smart. typical rca yeah. uh, but the sub on this is passive it's big it's fairly where's the heavy amp? where's the amp it's not it's in the unit you have to just it's a passive sub so the it's getting its supposed uh, 65 ish watts uh, over that cable so the sub is rated for i don't remember exactly what 65 watts ish and, with a and sound it just tube has reasons. a old school well, rca cable uh, to connect it to now there's how, how did you, a, how did you listen, find the base listen. how did you find the base okay listen i'm to, listening listen to this creative right. claims this is a tri amplified design where is it uh, exclusive tri amplified design so each of the five drivers in the sound bar and subwoofer i think that means four in the sound bar and one in the sub anyway what i noticed was Where's there was the actually a surprising fire? amount of power in the sub considering it is a passive sub that so. seems hard to believe okay. okay well if you've ever connected speakers to an amplifier brett you will find that a speaker yes. that has no power cord attached to it can produce very powerful sound when connected to a high powered yep. amplifier and that's because the electricity I, I have Travels Several. through the speaker wire and it interacts with the the driver inside of the speaker, which is what they're doing here. Creative figured it out. They figured out that by leveraging the technology from the beginning of home audio, they were able to produce sound in the subwoofer without having it actually plug into power. They have wow. fooled me with their low power RCA connectivity. 
You'd think it was low power, but that's just the connector they're using. You just have you just have you, know you don't what? want to give I'm, people I'm used uh, to RCA being, you know, uh not uh speaker level as used like to line it, level. Uh, being yeah, line, line, line level. But line level. you never owned a stereo back in the day where the speakers connected via RCA? All right, you're right. No, I, I prefer bare wire. I've had both, but it, but, anyway. but it was portable. It had a handle. <laughs> uh, I wrote in the review that I try not to be an audio exactly. snob, but <laughs> the impression I have from past experience with different sound bars is that they tend to sound a little thin. They sound a little mid rangey to me. And some of them try to make up for it by having a thumping powered sub. The trend these days is to have a wireless sub. So they sound unbalanced, is what you've. We've yeah, found there's there's always like a a as a ga- a chasm of missing audio mm-hmm. between the mm-hmm. high bass of the sub and the trebly mid range of the soundbar. Sometimes mm-hmm. this one sounded really good. It actually has a very full sound on its own, and there's a significant amount of bass coming out of the sub. It had powerful low end, not crazy. When I had it down here listening to it at this computer behind me, I was amazed at how much bass was coming out, but this is a low ceiling environment. Took it up so to the living it was in room. A good, it was a good environment. Yeah, took it up to yep. the living room. Here it is under my TV. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing width that I was not expecting. I have tower speakers no. left and right of the TV. And it sounded like this, the same width, like the sound stage was just as wide out of this little thing. So the simulated surround effects are actually quite good. I, I use the movie sound uh, preset mostly. So Which I'm, probably did some digital delays to it is, sort of It is, because if you that. turn off the EQ, it sounds yeah. exactly like I expected it to. It sounds yeah, yeah. narrow flat, and very flat. narrow, yeah. Yep. Not powerful at all. You have to engage one of the uh, presets. And you can customize those in the software. You can cycle through them with the buttons on the top of the device or with the remote. But you can also go into EQ and create your own. Here's the gaming presets default. As you can see, it adds more mid-range emphasis because gaming. I guess that's for chat. And then the movie is more scooped mid-range, and so is music, especially scooped. Mm. But you can customize it. You can set your own presets, do whatever you want. It saves stuff to the device. I noticed when I was messing around with the Overvolt the preamp? Huh? You can overvolt the preamp? You can do a lot of things. So the preamp slider for there. You can, and I don't recommend it because then it starts to sound distorted. You would get distortion, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, it does exactly what I think. Then. Yeah. Oh, good. So it, it's it's fine. And then I was trying to figure out, okay, what about this Super X Fi thing it's talking about? And then I discovered that you can't use it within the app. It forces you to go to the Windows App Store to download the Super X Fi app, which then requires you to make an account. At that point, I just said, okay, fine. I gave it my best effort. I'm not going to test Super X Fi because I don't want to make an account just to enable a feature to give simulated surround to my headphones. Wow. Some has been doing I'm, that for a long time. I just, I feel the hate daggers at the Super X Fi thing. I have to agree. I just, it seems a little onerous, but, but when does. Sound Blaster X kicked off, they started doing that for certain That's stuff. Lame. So you got to sign up to get the driver. The software was otherwise excellent. And then when I had to go out to get another piece of software and then create an account, I was like, what is happening? Why can't they just unify this all into the same software? <laughs> Why? But anyway, the uh, upshot of this is that it sounds very, very good. Better than I was expecting. Very impressive product. It's $329, which you mm. take that to say Best Buy, 300 to $350 can get you a sound bar from a sound bar with a sub from like JBL or Klipsch or Polk Audio, Samsung or LG. Sony. LG. Yes, LG. Well, well you wouldn't have maybe, to spend that much, yeah. but yeah. But those aren't going to be a sound blaster. Like those don't have a USB connection to your PC and give you like an aux in. And this has built in microphones. It it's a unique sort of a product. Gamer doesn't necessarily just mean the RGB light strip, but that's, of course, there. I ended up turning it off, of course, for the living room because, I mean, look at this. That's that's pretty bright. You can turn yeah, it down. Yes. You can turn down the brightness, but that's I, amazing. I would just like to add that you're not known to audio hyperbole. You're very willing to say this sounded like ass. 
I wouldn't say that. No, I would say it more diplomatically. Well, but yeah. Sure. But at this point, you're actually saying, this was pretty good. No, I, and Chris suck. Hoke this was actually good. This was nice. reviewed this before I did. This came out last uh, October, October 2021. I had been approached about reviewing this, and I said, absolutely, yeah, because I, you know, it's a sound blaster. I'm a vintage PC nerd, and I've got all these old sound blaster cards. I use a USB sound blaster for my PC. I have creative speakers. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Send me a creative product. But it was delayed. It was delayed all the way until this summer when I finally got mine. So, but well, I mean, Chris Coke got his back at launch, and he had a review of this over at MMORPG, where he talked it up. Like he talked about the best getting better and how it was. I think he gave it like a nine point five out of ten or something. I was like, hmm. really? Can it be that good? And then I heard it. I was like, okay, that's this is actually really really good. It sounds way way bigger and better than it has any right to. So hmm. that's if you good. Three hundred thirty dollars burning good. a hole in your pocket in these uncertain financial times. Absolutely. I have Creative Sound Works five point one speakers that sadly died, and they're still maybe oh. downstairs, or maybe I threw them away. I don't know. They were fantastic because they they, they bought up uh, Cambridge Sound Works and integrated a lot of their tech into PC speakers. They were all of my mains. The time. All of my mains are Cambridge Soundworks. My my mains in my uh, movie room are Cambridge. In my my workspace are all Cambridge, and I I can't say good enough things about them. I love those guys. Yeah, love those speakers. Excellent. All right, finally, rounding out the trio of audio reviews, Jeremy, please tell us about this tiny amp. From Fosse Audio. Yes. Which, uh, amazingly enough, this is literally the first time we've encountered them. I haven't even put a link to a review of a Fosse Audio product. Uh, they're they're relatively they're, they're big over in China. They're just recently out here, and so they suddenly sent me an email and like, hey, we've got this tiny uh, pocket amp. Uh, it's stereo. Would you like to review it? And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't see the point of that and they're like well no you should give it a shot and i'm like all right fine ship it out to me and so i take a look at it and it is we uh perfectly honest it's still wired back there because i didn't want to unwire the 10 speakers i just spent the, the time wiring them up wait so this is uh, not a headphone amp this is a speaker amp this is an unpowered speaker amp it only deals with unpowered speakers right, it will yes. not deal with anything that's powered uh it's it's fairly dead simple and that it's got an on off a treble a bass and a volume uh it, it will accept rca in uh on the back it, it will either take banana plugs or bare wire and since i run a bare wire system that was nice uh well you'll, you'll see the power supply there it says dc 18 volt to 48 volt well that they sell, ship you what there's your there's your size <laughs> it's smaller so it's, than it's smaller oops. than a storm of swords Yes. Smaller than your uh, And paper. not as thick either. So that's sort of your idea. But here's the thing. This bloody thing can drive up to 315 watts per channel at a 4-ohm load with 10% total di harmonic distortion. What? Or 10%? 150 well, watts. <laughs> un <laughs> you know where 4-ohms... You know where yeah, four ohms yeah, as a frequency yeah, yeah. normally occurs. The class D is yeah, amazing, no. but yeah, you do get you get those huge transients. Yeah, that's transient. why you don't run four ohm. Um, or it'll do 150 watt on each channel to eight ohms. That's with pretty good. Unclipped. Absolutely unclipped. unclipped. No distortion. Mm -hmm. No freaking nothing. Okay. Uh, and it happily it, it's running a, a Texas Instrument chip. Uh, the TPA 3255, mm -hmm. which, so it doesn't do Dolby, it does Pure Path Ultra HD signal with low distortion, and they're not kidding. Like, like the THD is under, it is 0.3%. The sound noise, their signal-to-noise ratio is 90 decibels, and the frequency range is just, like, obnoxious. So, okay, this little tiny thing is going to do this. And yeah, so well, sometimes uh, did you see the voltage on their power supply? It's 32 volts at five amps. I don't think they're shitting you. <laughs> uh, well, and 
in part of the manual, they will tell you that, you know, if you're going to go for a, a higher, if you want like serious wattage, uh, grab a 48 volt 10 amp power supply and plug it in. It can do oh, it. Yes. It doesn't oh, care. Yes. It doesn't oh, ship yes. with it, but you can do it. And you can yes. get the full 600 watt out of this bloody tiny little thing. And it's mm-hmm. all metal. So yeah, it warms up, but it, it spreads the heat out. So against this is a, a 30 year old amp that I have been running for a very, yeah, there, there yeah, that's the uh, specs on what it does. So at, at so a more reasonable 1% total harmonic distortion and noise, you have 260 watts stereo into four ohms. Yeah. Or 150 into, four ohms. doesn't quite double into four, but that's still very good. That's but the thing that's about often at very low frequencies. It's run them at, at uh, those higher. Yeah. But well, it's often that distortion lower. is very at often very low frequencies, where that blurriness really doesn't become so apparent to you. Well, the thing, well, yeah. one thing about Class D is that you do have uh, high frequency like switching noise, but that's generally filtered out. <gasps> oh, how, you're right about. Oh, no, it's, yeah. it's filtered out. It has to be I did filtered not out, that and that's fine because it's well above the range of human hearing anyway. So you're not losing yeah. any real audio um, fidelity by doing that, but. This uh, harmonic distortion chart. So basically, the practical limit is 100 watts because after that, Which it is rises fair. tremendously. Yeah. So at four ohms, though, you get up to about, it looks like around 200, almost 200 before the meteoric rise. Yeah. So that's, that's very good. That's actually quite similar to uh, the Class D amp that I have, which is a dual mono configuration, which only does mm-hmm. 100 and 200 at eight and four ohms. Without you know significant distortion. No, oh, who made that? That your dual monos? They're old um, ice power. Oh, that's going back. Yeah, it's a Calyx. Mm-hmm. They're a South Korean company. It's actually called uh, what is it called? Digital analog. It's the Calyx, the integrated. It's a fairly high end dual mono thing that they had in music shops around here for a while back in the day, but. I have a set of old carvers that uh, were very similarly um, Mm. worked at a time. That's impressive for something that small. Yeah. Well, you should see what it's hooked up to. How big are the speakers? (laughs) What did you hook it up to? (laughs) Well, uh, 15. Is there a picture of that in here? Where's the picture of the speakers they're hooked up to? Yes, please. All right, hold on. Let me go back to the review. It's a montage. Uh, I mean, I wasn't going to take the picture. Of I like it. the difference between the you know the receiver and this. Yes, yes. nice, both do nice. It. And one of them does a better job, sadly. Yeah, there's a little bit of tech porn on the inside of what this Kenwood that I'm oh, running man, is. This is an oldie. It's from the '88. It's from the '80s. Yeah, but yeah, those though. This is what I hooked up to this poor little thing. <laughs> oh, for the love! Oh, Good wow. there are oh, ten yes. of them. So each of those are pairs. I only took a picture of one of them, but there's okay. two of those. Uh, yeah. That's an old Kenwood. That's an old Kenwood. Uh, that's an old Awa. Uh, and I don't know what the hell the ones with the... Uh, what is yeah. that? That is old. <laughs> that's the 1980s, my friend. Look at the size and of that. That's, woof that's a 15. And you've Easily got... You've got you can change tone. The crossover. Yeah. That's yeah. a crossover. It's a oh, crossover switch. Dial. Two pairs are crossovers. It's, you have it's a back. Yeah, There's it, one in the back. Oh, look, this one has it too. Yeah. Two of them are crossovers. The others are not. That's mm. uh, that's the old Radio Shack dial and the one in the black one on the left. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, all of this was hooked up to this poor little thing. But I figured you guys would like some old uh, hardware porn shots. It's a pretty big uh, transformer. Oh my there. god! Yeah, power yes. supplies were cute back then, eh? The capacitors ain't too small either. No, they, they actually, you I'm, know, if you go back, it, you don't get the HDMI switching and all that stuff. But if you have an old, there's nothing receiver that has yeah. analog multi-channel input. There's no reason to get rid of that. Also, it's one of the uh, first it's implementations brutish. of Dolby Surround. Huh. There's an entire yeah, logic done, board on there that just all be surround on the top there. But but done with analog circuits. Yes. <laughs> these are all like pin through. Well, there's a couple surface mount things here. I guess. No, these are yeah. all just 
I am shocked by how healthy those capacitors look. I know. Uh, I've only had to replace two of them. And there's still and there some were, grounding and issues, since, but for the most part, if I slap it, it goes away. They were through hole, weren't they? And it was a single layer board, I bet. Oh, well, look at the sideboard at the bottom there. Uh, yeah, they're through hole. <laughs> yeah, they're all through hole. See, through hole, I so, misspoke last week. I can't do anything service mount. The only thing I've ever soldered successfully is through hole. So I could actually work correct. on it. Correct. Same here. Yeah, but you know what? Leaking capacitors, it was fixable back then. You can't fix yeah. anything nowadays. That stuff. No. Could potentially There's live no solid forever state. in <laughs> in the right hands. That could be fixed. Did you open this thing up to show that. us the guts of the tiny unit? Uh, no, because it looked like it was going to be incredibly difficult to open up. Oh. Uh, I, I I may at a later date, uh, but uh, it was enough of a fight to get all of the wires that used to be spread out between four channels, left and right for rear and front to just some, uh, just some head head Jeremy here. There's Jeremy, uh, were you listening to a little quadraphonic? Is that what you were doing? Uh, yeah, I was. So uh, my upstairs <laughs> neighbor, who is uh, a musician by trade, along with some other things to the point where he went to our local music store on Sunday to pick up some guitar strings and came home with an 88 key weighted Roland keyboard. Uh, so far has refused to re- do any of in be involved in any of my headset reviews. Uh, he has five hundred dollar head Sennheisers, and he's like, "There's no way in hell that I'm even want to listen to these mono price ones. They're they're going to be crap." I'm like, fine, whatever, dude. Uh, so I hooked this up, and I said, "Hey, Chris, come on in for a. We'll, we'll fire up YouTube and listen to some tunes." And then the first thing he said is, "Well, crap. It's a good thing you finally fixed that Kenwood. It sounds pretty good right now." I'm like, "No, dude. This is the box that we both when we arrived said." I don't know what the heck this thing is for, but we're going to try it out. And yeah, that's what it sounds like. He goes, yeah, titillating. The problem is, <laughs> is that literally, <laughs> yes, that's literally what he said. Yes. And it would practically fit in your back pocket. It pretty much does. Uh, if you can that's put a book in your nuts. back pocket, it fits in there. Uh, it is stupidly clean. Uh, there is, beautiful separation between the sides if you were going to use this like i said if he's got monitors upstairs but they're powered but if you had unpowered monitors this thing would be perfect if you've got limited space and two bookshelf speakers brilliant it i and it's the spoiler i've held on to it uh, it gets a little toasty yeah but it's well, entirely the, the, metal mosfets, case. the mosfets yeah, must be against the metal case yeah. The damn thing is 75 bucks. Jeez. Unbelievable. Yeah. So what's on the inside is well worth it. If you've got limited space and some really good bookish shelf speakers, this thing would be brilliant. Like if you've got any sort of stereo solution that you want. And the weird thing is you go to Fozzie and like there are headphone amps. You can tell this isn't a headphone amp because it doesn't have any vacuum tubes in it. Uh <laughs> They've got a lot of interesting things. Hmm. I don't know. It's. Are you saying because it's not pretentious that it's actually good? (laughs) Well, it's, it's good and not full of itself for it. Uh, Let's just say it's not bad. It's certainly not bad. See, I don't know. I'm going to, I kind of miss the full surround. uh, So I may go back, but for now I'm just, impressed at the the clarity of like uh the uh lord of the rings the 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 rings of power that just came out there's a lot of dialogue while there is loud noises happening in the background my ken so dynamic changes soft low yeah. soft low this thing that's uh, what was the hard, transient hard response hard right. transients yes, mm. yes the transients you know on this is brilliant i've heard the term <laughs> Exceptional transients, crystalline clarity in the upper mid-range yeah. and the treble. So I kind of liked it, and the audio file that I know said titillating. Well, so there you okay, go. there you have it. There. A $75 amp, an unassuming, and apparently high-quality device. 600 watt amp. And you can always just throw some heat sinks on it. If it gets too hot, just cut a hole in the top, put some heat sinks on it. Just like Jeremy's PC. Yeah, just put a box for it. 
What a box fan. Just is just it. just box fan it. Came like that. All right, it is time for picks of the week. Josh, get us started. Me? Yes, Me. you. Hey, you know what? There's new mice coming out. I'm kind of excited about it. I, I like I like the Logitech G502. Kind of excited about the 502X. I don't like wireless mice. I don't. But damn it, I'll I'll take a wired one any day of the week. So, you know, better switches. Really high DPI. They fit nicely. They'll glide around. Know what I'm saying? 13 programmable controls. Thin wall molding to achieve 89G. I don't know what the hell that means. I think but anyway. 89 grams of total weight. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, I'm going to move my mouse at 89Gs. You're going to tear That's your fingers bad. off. I sure will. <laughs> my fingers will weigh a thousand pounds a piece. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah, no. I, it looks kind of interesting to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling you to go out and buy it, but when it eventually comes out, I'm 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 going to get one because mine's starting to wear down. I, I want to turn that green LED I want to turn that green LED off. All right, Jeremy. Your what? Pick. Your pick. Ah, this was uh, fed to me by uh, the chat and Discord. Yeah, Maxius, right? Yeah, Stellar Data Recovery. So I haven't tried it yet, but like I totally look, took a look at it, and first off, I'm like. Oh, your pair of corrupt PST files? I hate you. I the PST files need to die and go away. Oh, but you do exchange database corruption too? That's interesting. You can apparently repair just about any database going. Oh, and uh, it can pretty much handle any sort of corrupted uh, Windows registry or file system. I mean, of course, short of BetLocker, but it will retrieve data from RAID 0. It'll retrieve data from a, rate, uh, a death wish RAID. This is impressive. And, you know, I, I kind of want to grab this. It's and, and there's been a lot of uh, good reviews about it as well. But, yeah, this Jeremy, looks like serious data recovery. Jeremy, yeah. can it revive a dead RAID from a Dell Perk controller? Uh, well, it's Dell, so uh, you're in proprietary hell. All right, just checking. I just wanted, but just throwing that try out. Try it. What's the cost? <laughs> it says all it says is free download. I'm guessing that you have to license it at some point. Uh, I mean, for for, for oh, this is a free uh, version. Okay. for individuals. There's free, standard, professional, and premium. Oh, I see. So up to so, one gigabyte of data for free, and then you have to pay for it if you want more. Which, to be honest, I mean, if you can if you can get a gigabyte of data, that means I know it's worth paying for because I can get the rest of it back. If you're like, yeah, there's about 180 meg worth of file uh, tags that we've got. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Wait, it says it will restore from to... BitLocker. You just have to. Yeah, see, you, all you have to do is enter the BitLocker decryption key. <laughs> Whoops. Which you know, yeah. Well, it used to be on the, 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 the key under my keyboard, and I lost the keyboard, so I don't know my key anymore. Mm. And it I'm, I'm, not sure, well. I'm not sure how much a gigabyte of data is, but it sounds like a lot. It, you know, a gil? It's, it's an old measurement. Mm. A gil. It's mm. like a dollar, but in the Final Fantasy universe. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Sure. All right, okay. Brett. No, it's an alcoholic term. Your pick. I... I feel like this may be a bit of a cop out because I did. I, I guess you could say steal it from Discord. This is the 2K Games Mega Bundle. Although I definitely zeroed in on three of the uh, full collections for XCOM, Bioshock, and Borderlands Three. And my second tier uh, way here was Civ, uh, Civ Six, and Mafia. Uh, I think some people would get some enjoyment out of the Duke Nukem collection. The Duke or Nukem even Forever the, collection. That's the deep. Duke Nukem Forever Pacific. collection. Although that didn't rise to the level of I'm super interested in it. No. But the other ones definitely did. Our, people might see RTS, the Army Men RTS, as like, hey, that's kind of cool. But like I said, the ones that drew my attention were uh, XCOM, Borderlands 3, and uh, the full 
uh, suite of Bioshock. So for sixteen bucks, you can you can dip into those full collections. Not a bad deal. Are these always going to be Steam codes? Is it a mix like Steam and Epic, or how does this delivered? Uh, as far as I know, it's all Steam okay. right now. So just add to that endless backlog. Of games that you haven't played. Look, yeah. but if, cheaply. if you don't if you don't have an endless backlog of stuff in your Steam library or whatever library of yours, you're just not doing it right. I don't, you're I'm not, not discriminating. Right. You could have an epic. You could have a fat fat epic store. You know, I don't care. But just saying that if you don't have that, then maybe you're not gaming. Oh, hey, uh, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider <laughs> is the free epic game today. Hmm. I did actually yeah, check uh, An- Amazon's Prime games, and I didn't really see anything interesting there either, okay. by the way. No, it never is. Uh, my pick I'm, is, I'm of course, a piece of uh, ancient hardware in the box. My pick is the uh, ATI Expert 128. Now, the reason I would pick such an anemic expansion card this is a 16 megabyte pci graphics card it's because of the demo disc that came with it isn't it no it's because this was my first graphics card prior Mm. to this i was using integrated graphics at first in an amd k6 2 system that was the family computer and then in my first computer of my own when i moved out and got an apartment which was a dell dimension 2100 with a celeron processor and integrated intel graphics the 810 chipset so going from that to this card which is just a rebadged rage 128 on the pci bus yeah rage 128 well was that was a darn good i mean it was uh, was reva tnt style card it it did there were coloring really well many Uh, of those so many of those yeah they were very 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 popular and the uh, 3D Mark people did a Rage 128 demo that had some groovy, groovy music to it. Yeah, this this was quite capable for the kind of stuff I was playing back then. It was very low frame rates and anything more advanced, but in like 2000, ran Quake Two and 32 bit, nice. Yeah, it was it was a huge step up from four megabytes of Intel graphics on my motherboard. That's for sure. And that concludes another episode of the PC Perspective Podcast. Please join us again next week. If we do this again next week, which we probably will. We keep on we keep on sort of intimating on. that we won't. Because one of these weeks we will take the week off. I promise. I think the last And week you we know, one of these like days New Year's or one of us will these die. Weeks. Well, that's also true. Yeah. We're not that promising to do it on air. But well or both at the same time. You've never met my family, have you? No, no. I haven't had the pleasure. Of it. One of these days, I'll fly out to Laramie, and I will insist that I stay at your house for free. <laughs> I hey, want to sample the burgers. Welcome. I have a guest room. Oh, perfect. And I, I yeah. want to sleep in Josh's guest room. Definitely. But there's you no the bathroom. meat smoking. It's- Josh, is there a lock on the door? No, it's it's a, it's a folding bifold mm. door. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, like I might, I might that makes me uncomfortable. Wait, a sure. folding? Is this like a, one of those little like screen partitions? But you're calling it it's a like, door? Is it is it like, more of a closet? It's like an accordion, you know, yeah, except it's... only two leaves. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that's not really a room. <laughs> Tell me, you got one of the old style fold up beds too. No. You just tuck it in the corner of the room. No, nice. no, we don't have one of those. I think the show would be awesome, over, though. by the way. We're in after show mode now. <laughs> <laughs>